So today we'd like to talk about standing waves. In our last lesson, we learned about constructive and destructive interference. We saw the red and blue waves were synchronized, making for a bigger amplitude, known as constructive interference. We saw that we just add the two amplitudes together to get our total amplitude of the constructive wave. Then we saw destructive interference, where the two waves are out of sync, and cause the amplitude of the combined wave to get smaller and sometimes disappear altogether. So these are going to be useful when we look at this idea of a standing wave. So I'm going to create a standing wave in a phone cord and this is what's going to be known as the fundamental standing wave. As you can see, the two endpoints are fixed and the center is oscillating with a great amplitude. Almost like a jump rope. Okay, this is going to be the fundamental, and I hope you can see it. There is half of a sine curve contained within the length of that phone cord. Here is our next standing wave. We have the same cord, same length, but at a different frequency. You can see I can create a pattern where we have one part of the wave not moving, and we can see that we have two parts that are moving with a very large amplitude this time. This time it is known as the second um, harmonic, or the first overtone, or the second mode of oscillation. And this time you can see an entire sine curve fitting within this standing wave. Finally, we're gonna try one where we get um, one and a half sine curves fitting in the wave. And I think you can see it really well. We now have two points that are not moving and three points that are moving with a very large amplitude. Okay, these spots that are not moving are known as nodes and the spots that are moving a lot are known as antinodes. So one of the most famous standing waves occurred in the beginning of the 1940s in a bridge out in Washington State. And you can see the bridge oscillating, and you can see one spot where the oscillation is pretty much nil, and you can see other spots where the oscillation is a lot. So these are again known as nodes and antinodes. These arise based on our types of interference. So these standing waves are gonna occur when reflected waves interact with the original wave and overlap. So I hope you can see that if we have a reflected wave that looks like that and an original wave that looks like that, when they are right on top of each other, they are gonna cancel out, produce destructive interference, and then the two waves continue on their original paths. In this case, we have the two waves heading toward each other and this time they're going to make constructive interference and again, then pass right through each other. So it's this interaction of an original wave and a reflected wave that are responsible for the different parts of a standing wave. So let's take a look. From this direction we have one wave, from the other direction we have another wave. And you can see as they overlap, we're going to do this in slow motion, the black represents the actual wave you would see on the string. You can see the ghost images of the blue and the green wave. And if you look at where I put the cursor, you'll notice the green wave and the purple wave are always directly opposite each other. So at that spot, you will have destructive interference at all moments in time. That spot will never move, and that spot is what is known as a node. You'll see other spots that are gonna move with a very large amplitude, and those spots are known as antinodes. So let's watch it one more time, and let's look at the nodes and antinodes. Again, it's a reflected wave, an original wave combining together to produce a combined wave. If you watch this spot, you'll see that that spot is gonna go from constructive interference You'll see it has almost no amplitude, and then we'll get constructive interference in the other direction. 
whereas this spot is always destructive. All right, so the nodes are with destructive interference and the antinodes are spots where we sometimes have 100% constructive interference. Okay, so it's gonna look like this. Our string again is the black wave. You see the reflected wave in the original wave and you'll see some spots oscillating with a large amplitude and other spots not oscillating at all. Okay, so if you want to draw it out, you can draw it out something like this. Again, node, 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 anti-node, anti-node, anti-node. You'll notice the string is oscillating back and forth and that's why I drew a bunch of these things, showing you the string at different moments in time. Okay, so I'd like to show you the different modes that I showed you with the phone cord. So again, this one is called the fundamental. This one is called your first overtone. Sometimes this is referred to as the first harmonic, and sometimes this is referred to as your second harmonic. This is the simplest mode of oscillation. This is the second simplest mode of oscillation. So let them rip. And you can see with the fundamental, we have nodes at each end, and we have one anti-node in between. With the second harmonic, you could see that we have nodes at each end, but you can also see there is a node right in the middle. And this leads to two anti-nodes over the length of that string. All right, so the same length string oscillated at different frequencies will create the different modes of oscillation. This is the fundamental frequency. This would be the first overtone. Different frequencies will produce different modes of oscillation. No frequency lower than this will create a standing wave, and no frequency in between these two will create a standing wave. So certain frequencies are special in that they will produce standing waves in this string. So with stringed instruments, it's going to be the same thing. We have things that are locking down the string at each end, and then the string is going to oscillate in between. The string will have different modes of oscillation. The first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic. Again, this is called your fundamental. This is your first overtone and your second overtone. Okay, so different modes of oscillation are going to give us different frequencies from the same string. I'd like to work through the math so you guys see how you figure out what note a certain guitar string is going to produce. So we're going to look at string number two. You'll notice the mass of the string in grams per meter. You want to divide that by a thousand to get it into kilograms per meter. That number will go in for the quantity of linear density. Then it all is determined by how tightly you make the uh, string, how tight you make the string, and how much distance we have for the oscillating part of our string. All right, so step one, you plug in your tension and your linear density to find the speed of the wave. All right, so we're going to work with the linear density of 0 0.004466 kilograms per cubic meter. We're going to tension it up to about 90, 89.9 newtons. Okay, we're going to have the string 6.45 centimeters apart. And we would like to know what is the fundamental note that comes out. So again, start by finding your velocity and you should get something in the hundreds, try not to round it. Next, since we're looking at fundamental, realize that it's going to look like this. Greatly exaggerated. A node on each end and half a sine curve in between. So the wavelength of that sine curve 
should be double the length of the string because half of a sine curve is fitting in that length. Once you know the velocity and the wavelength, we can use our formula from before to find the frequency that comes out of that string. So give it a try and see what you get. Next, we want to see where that uh, note falls on our musical scale. Again, this is a scientific scale. That's not what we're tuning our guitar to. We want to use the scale based on A440. We're not going to get anything that lies on this uh, part of our piano. We're getting a frequency much lower. But if we go down one octave for A, we'll get an A of 220. And if we go down one more octave for A, we should get 110 hertz. And that is the frequency that you should have calculated for that guitar string. Okay, so that string should be an A, two octaves below middle C. If we ask for the second harmonic of the same string, that would be when it looks like this. You still do the same steps. So you get your velocity, it should be the same as we had before. The only difference is now an entire wave fits in the length of that string. Then you do velocity over frequency and you solve for your new frequency. This time we should get a frequency that's one octave above the last frequency that we calculated. So depending on which mode of oscillation you excite determines which of those frequencies you're going to get. And in fact, in real guitars, you may sometimes get both modes of oscillation at the same time. And that's why when we look at the pattern on an oscilloscope, depending on how hard we pluck the string, you might get the pattern that you would see for sounds of two octaves overlapping each other. So anyway, I hope you guys understand how standing waves form, um, how to calculate the frequency that creates a standing wave, either the fundamental, the first harmonic, or, or first overtone, or any of the other overtones for that string.